more than a hundred million years ago, the dinosaurs ruled the land. But there were also some fascinating creatures in the oceans that often get overlooked. So today, we're going to look at these super cool creatures from ancient times who called the ocean their home. Because they deserve the spotlight every now and then too. Why let dinosaurs have all the fun, right? So, if you're curious about the kings of the sea from back then, buckle up and join us as we explore the depths of the prehistoric ocean. But before we proceed, let's talk about the Mesozoic era to set the stage. Picture a world where big reptiles ruled instead of mammals. No bird chirps, no flowers to admire, no grass to trim. Back then, you could stroll from the North Pole to the South Pole on a massive landmass called Pangaea. Your country in the Mesozoic was totally different from today. It wasn't a separate piece of land. It sat further north or south, and the climate and plants were unlike what we know now. For instance, if you're thinking about Australia, its Mesozoic tail, including its dinosaurs, is tied to the largest southern supercontinent, Gondwana. Well, when did this Mesozoic era begin, you may be asking? The Earth's history is divided into different eras, and two important ones are the Paleozoic and the Cenozoic eras. The Paleozoic era spans from about 541 million years ago to 252.2 million years ago. It's a time marked by significant geological, climatic and evolutionary changes. Life evolved from simple forms to more complex creatures. And by the end of the Paleozoic, the first vertebrates and land-dwelling plants appeared. This era concluded with a mass extinction event that paved the way for the Mesozoic era. The Mesozoic era followed with its well-known periods, Triassic, Jurassic, and Cretaceous. Dinosaurs dominated during this time, and it concluded with another mass extinction event. Then came the Cenozoic era, starting around 66 million years ago and continuing to the present day. This era is often referred to as the Age of Mammals. It witnessed the evolution and diversification of mammals, including our own species, Homo sapiens. The Cenozoic is divided into epochs, including the Paleogene, Neogene, and Quaternary epochs. Notable events include the development of grasslands, the rise of large mammals, and the evolution of hominids, leading to modern humans. The Cenozoic is the era we are currently in, shaping the world as we know it today. From the dawn of the dinosaurs to their extinction, the Mesozoic was ruled by reptiles. Dinosaurs may have dominated this era, but it also saw the evolution of mammals, birds, and flowering plants. Some of the plants and animal groups from this time are extinct, but others have survived until today, which is why the Mesozoic is named for middle life. At the beginning of the Mesozoic era, the supercontinent began to break up. Deserts covered part of the interior, but shallow seas reinvaded the lowlands. Reptiles evolved rapidly, and two important new groups appeared. Theropsids, mammal-like reptiles, gave rise to true mammals by the end of the period. The Condontians evolved into crocodiles, pterosaurs, and dinosaurs. Dinosaurs dominated the land for the next 140 million years, while mammals remained small and inconspicuous. Dinosaurs developed into giants like Brachiosaurus and Apatosaurus, and smaller armored forms like Stegosaurus. Terrifying meat eaters, including Allosaurus, stalked the vegetarians. Birds appeared, probably evolving from small dinosaurs, but the skies belonged to the Pterosaurus. When Pangaea split about 200 million years ago, Gondwana began its own isolated journey and gradual breakup into the land masses we know today. Australia, South America, Africa, India, Madagascar, Antarctica, and New Zealand. This paleo history is recorded in identical rocks and fossils found across these modern landmasses when we reconnect them 
as they were in the past, the rocks and fossils clearly match up. The Mesozoic came to an abrupt end 66 million years ago in a dramatic extinction event. Death, destruction, devastation. An estimated 70% of plants and animal species perished. Many theories have been suggested for its cause. The few that are accepted as scientifically valid are placed into two opposing groups. The catastrophists believe the mass extinction happened suddenly due to a meteorite impact. The gradualists consider it was prolonged and caused by climate change or volcanic activity, with the meteorite only providing the final blow. Now, let's talk about the sea creatures that existed in the pre-ancient era. Starting with the Mosasaurus. This is one creature that made it in Jurassic World. The Mosasaurus ruled the ocean during the Cretaceous period and are closely related to snakes and monitor lizards we see today. They were fast in the water with powerful tails that propelled them and small flippers that allowed them to easily maneuver to find their prey. Mosasaurus was at the top of the food chain and would eat pretty much anything they found in the ocean. Sharks, cephalopods, giant turtles, and even other mosauruses. The real mosaurus wasn't quite as big as Jurassic World made it out to be. As always, real life fails to live up to the Hollywood hype. The mosasaurus measured up to 59 feet long, bigger than a Tyrannosaurus rex, and about the size of a humpback whale today. While that doesn't measure up to the skyscraper-sized beasts of the silver screen, the Mosasaurus shouldn't be embarrassed about their fearsome stature. Plesiosaurus. Plesiosaurus were massive with long necks that made up half the length of their bodies. They grew up to 43 feet, about the size of a very large bus, but their size didn't stop them from flying through the water. They had four flippers and we believe they moved through the water like penguins, their front limbs doing the work while their back limbs steered them on course. If the look of these creatures seems familiar, perhaps it's because you've been monster hunting lately. They are thought to be the origin of legends like the Loch Ness Monster, though there have been no evidence of these animals existing in modern times. Plesiosaurus had no gills, so they had to come up to the surface for air, just like marine mammals today. This isn't the only thing they had in common with modern dolphins and whales. A fossil found of a pregnant plesiosaur gives us evidence to support that these creatures gave birth to live young. Unlike modern reptiles, plesiosaurus produced one or a few babies at a time, and they invested a lot of care of their babies. They are much like modern dolphins, and perhaps the way they took care of their young as well. Helicoprion. One of the weirdest looking prehistoric animals has to be the Helicoprion. If you start at the tail and move up, it looks like a normal shark right up to the top where the mouth begins. The lower jaw ends in a circular saw-like shape that makes it look like it belongs in a Bond villain's lair. It's hard to believe that this strange and terrifying creature once roamed this planet. Its weird spinning blade has been a scientific mystery for over a century. Ancient chondrichthians, a class of animals that include sharks and rays, often leave little behind for researchers. Their bodies are mainly made of cartilage, which is difficult to preserve. In the case of the Helicoprion, this means that researchers first discovered them through their confusing array of teeth. No one really knew where these chompers fit, as there was little left of their overall bodies to give them clues about the rest of the animal. Paleontologists debated for years whether these fossils were defensive spines, a terrifying row of teeth waiting at the back of a throat, part of a tail at the back end no one wants to mess with, a nightmarish tongue, or a protrusion curling underneath the mouth. Researchers were finally able to solve this mystery using a CT scan to find bits of cartilage left behind. They were able to confirm that the spiral of teeth was part of the lower jaw. They also found that the Helicoprion had no other teeth other than its frightening lower jaw. The teeth would rotate outward when it opened its mouth and then turn backward like a circular saw 
once the mouth was closed to tear at its prey. The Megalodon One of the largest predators to have ever lived. Megalodon captures people's imagination. And for good reason. The first Megalodon fossils, previously called Carcharodon or Carcaracles Megalodon, and now known as Otidus Megalodon, date to 20 million years ago. For the next 13 million years, this massive shark ruled the oceans until it went extinct just 3.6 million years ago. It wasn't just the biggest shark, it was one of the largest fish ever. It is well known for starring in the 2018 Megalodon movie, The Meg. But in reality, these animals were a little shorter than the 23 meter long fictional monster it depicted. Estimates suggest Megalodon actually grew to between 15 and 18 meters in length, three times longer than the largest recorded great white shark. It may have been comparable in length to today's biggest whale sharks, and the largest of which has measured in at 18.8 meters. Now, although these amazing animals are no longer roaming the ocean, not all prehistoric animals are extinct. Finding out what caused the mass extinction is one thing. How and why some groups of animals survive when others did not is another. Unfortunately, gaps in the fossil record and our knowledge about the extinction event mean we may never have all the answers 